Capitol tonight one final time. So even before today's State of the State speech, there was actually some drama in the State Senate. Four disenfranchised Democrats decided to break from their conference, citing serious concerns with the current leadership. And then they formed their own independent coalition. We're joined by all four of these Democrats tonight. They are Central New York Senator Dave Valeski, newly elected Hudson Valley Senator Dave Carlucci, Senator Diane Savino from Staten Island, and the former Deputy Majority Leader of the Senate, Jeff Klein, who represents parts of the Bronx and Westchester County. Thank you very much, everybody, for Thank joining you. us. Uh, Diane, thank you very much. You have actually been here before. Everybody, I think, has been here before, mm -hmm. so thanks. Another, yeah. um, I think I'm going to start with you, Senator, because y you actually, over the weekend, decided to step down from your number two position. Um, you were the Deputy Majority Leader, as I mentioned. Now everybody's back in the minority, um, except you were never in the minority. <laughs> we'll get to that. Um, and you had some really harsh words for uh, John Sampson, who is now the minority leader, despite the fact that you guys did not vote for him today. Um, just reiterate that argument for us, if you would. Well, uh, you know, it was a tough decision, and it was a very personal one. You know, uh, I worked uh, very hard to take the majority, try to keep the majority. And uh, unfortunately, I think uh, enough is enough. Uh, I don't think uh, the present leadership uh, understands what it means to lay out a legislative agenda, uh, to win back the voters' trust. I don't think uh, they understand how to do the people's business effectively, uh, always caught up in investigations and personal perks and power grabs. And I really thought that uh, the best way uh, that we can govern and win back the voters' trust uh, is to govern in a bipartisan fashion, an independent democratic conference uh, working with the majority. Okay. Um, you actually, Senator Valeski, were the only senator not to, to abstain. I'm, I'm correct on this, right? You were the only senator who abstained. Uh, Senator Carlos, you were not even in the room at the time. It was um, a uh, vote of confidence, really, that, that wasn't binding on Senator Sampson. It took place at the end of November. Right. Um, and was it part that vote, in part, that motivated you to make this decision to join with everybody yeah, here? Yeah, very much so. And I think, you know, from that perspective, we found out only a couple of weeks after that that the Democratic conference over the last two years spent $14 million more than was budgeted during the time of the most severe fiscal crisis that the state has seen since the 1930s. That kind of fiscal mismanagement is simply unacceptable. And I felt, from my perspective, and in representing my constituents, who are really sick and tired of the status quo in Albany, that we had to do something different and really try to change uh, the paradigm and create a new paradigm in the states. But why not do it from the inside out? I mean, already the Democrats are out of the minor of the majority in the minority. They're already weakened, and now arguably they're 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 fractured. Because the old ways, Liz, have not been working. The reforms that we talked about for years and years were not followed through. We believe, all four of us believe, in coming together to form this third legislative caucus. That we have to think out of the box. The time has long since come to try something different. The old ways are not working. Okay, now, Senator Savino, you and I have, have spoken on numerous occasions. I, I'm pretty familiar with everybody's ideology here, and, and you know, it actually, with the exception of, of you, David, because you don't have a voting record here, you were clerk in Clarkstown, right? So, um, you're from upstate, Senator right. Valeski. You are from the Bronx. You have a fairly cons Westchester. conservative voting record, generally. You're, uh, Senator Savino, a pretty rock-ribbed Democrat. I mean, women's rights, you, um, are, you have come from an organized labor background. Mm -hmm. um, this seems to me, you talked this morning at the press conference where you, you guys all announced yourselves about being in line with Governor Cuomo's agenda, which is pretty fiscally conservative, uh, very conservative, actually. Well, I, I think, Liz, first and foremost, you know, Minimally, the three of us here, Senator Klein, myself, and Senator Valeski, have invested a lot of time and effort over the past... And money. And, and money. Right. Over the past several years, you know, trying to convince the voters that the Democratic Party had the best answers for the people of the state of New York. And remember, the Democratic Party is a very big tent. Um, we have people who are fiscal conservatives and social liberals. We have people who are economic liberals and social liberals. We have people who are economic liberals and social conservatives. So the Democratic Party has always had a very large, you know, reach within the population. What we've seen, though, after we finally convinced the public that the Democratic Party had the answers for the people of the state of New York, that we should be entrusted with the power in the New York State Senate to make those decisions, Instead, what we saw was two years of internal squabbling, corruption, dysfunction. And in spite of that, we were able to advance, you know, some very substantive issues and get them, you know, enacted into law, like the Domestic Workers' Bill of Rights, yep. like the Wage Theft Prevention Act, like the Foreclosure Prevention Act, the most comprehensive in the nation, you know, and several other things. But we can no longer do this from inside this conference. 
This is a conference that doesn't recognize that the reason we lost in November was not because of anti-incumbency. It was because people were tired of the antics of our conference. Okay, then why not just join with the Republicans? They actually make the trains run on time. Because we're Democrats. We're not Republicans. You see, that would be purely about power. If I was only interested in where I could get a better committee or who, you know, or, or whether, whether I could make more money or, or my staff could earn more money, I could become a Republican. But I'm not a Republican. I have, I have very principled positions that are Democratic positions, as Senator Klein does and Valesky does and Carlucci does. We still believe the Democratic Party has the best solutions for the problems that this state faces. We don't think that this conference can articulate those democratic solutions. Okay, Senator Carlucci, before you jump in, and I think everybody should jump in, when, when I just want to hear from you first. Yes. You're the freshman here. You just got here, and all of a sudden, you actually got here with the assistance, and no small assistance from Senator Klein, who, you know, you, you raised a lot of money, contributed a lot of money to the, to the Senate Democratic Conference. I think you did too, if I'm not mistaken, Senator Savino. So I'm not sure if, if you did. I know everybody was transferring money in because pretty much the Senate Democrats went broke trying to keep the, the majority. Now they're three million dollars in debt. Nevertheless, John Sampson supported you, the Democrats that as they exist support you, and when you came here you decided that the first thing that you would do would be break from the conference. So why, you believe that that's in keeping with what you ran on. You ran on an independent platform. Didn't that's you? right. You did. I, I ran, I told people I'm an independent Democrat. And look, a lot of people helped me out on my campaign. I had senior citizens volunteering every waking day, uh, every waking hour of the day, uh, mm -hmm. making calls every night. So there was a lot of people that participated in my campaign. And the reality is I owe my allegiance to the voters in my district. And right now they're suffering. People are being squeezed out of our community because of spiraling out of control property taxes. Uh, people are losing their jobs in record numbers. And the status quo isn't working. And we decided we, you know, if we're gonna do the same thing over and over again and expect different results, we're, we're crazy. So we've got to take a new approach, and it's following right in line with what Governor Cuomo was talking about today, that we need a new approach to solve the problems of the 21st okay. century. But what if tomorrow um, someone, and we don't wish this, of course, but someone on the Republican side, something happens to them, and there's a special election, and now the Senate is deadlocked. I mean, you guys have the ability to really swing the agenda in well, a deadlock. I think the only chamber. way this is going to work is if we can put politics, uh, politics aside for a moment. I mean, the election is, we just ended. Uh, the voters are very upset. We need to win back their trust. The way we do that is by governing in a bipartisan fashion. And if we're going to always look to the next election, election, that's not a legislative strategy. That's not what the voters want to hear. And uh, I think we have to move forward as one and put politics aside and let's just do and the people's just, business. Just to follow up on that, I think Senator Klein is absolutely correct. If you look at many of the statements that have been coming out of the Senate Democratic Conference since the election, it's been all about what we need to do to win back the majority in 2012. Well, can don't we you want to win? Do you not want to win back the majority? Can we do what's in the best interest of the people? But do you want to win back the majority? Good, good government is good politics. Good right. politics exactly. is good okay. government. And that's what will convince the voters that we should be entrusted with the power in the New York State Senate. I mean, look, and until we are able to do those things, we're going to continue to lose the support of voters. Right. I mean, the issues that my district care about, the people of Hudson Valley, really aren't Democratic or Republican. They're about property tax reform. They're about putting people to work. They're about reforming the way we do business in Albany. Okay. Right. And Liz, I would just suggest to you what we saw in Washington only a month ago, in the lame duck session, right. when compromise was finally reached between the president and the incoming Republican majority. I would suggest to you that the American people were the winners because okay. things finally got done. We well, don't see that. The voters were celebrating. Okay, that. let exactly. me let me ask this because you, you're some, at least one of your colleagues has made a, who's obviously not at the table a Democrat and and we won't name names has said you know he's disappointed the the, Dem, the Democratic conference leader who was restored today to minority to as the leader said it, this is not the time for politics much as what you just said. Um, as he's accusing you of playing politics. There's been accusations of sour grapes because at one point, Senator Klein, you were believed to be a potential contender, maybe in the pipeline to be the leader of the conference. And also, there was, of course, the coup in the, in the summer of 2009. You, actually, both of you spoke um, very, all three of you spoke very uh, passionately about um, your anger during that time. Mm -hmm. But and, now, and by the way, talked about a coalition. You did a, a reform right. coalition That's government right. at, at the time. time. You did yes. and came very close, if yes. I remember yes. correctly. Yes. I, I don't remember why you couldn't get the deal at done. At the last minute, people thought it was uh, more important to, uh, and specifically, John Sampson thought it was more important to get Pedro Espada back as a Democrat. Okay, but when people are making these connections and say, "Well, they're no better than the than the amigos, than those people who jumped ship to join with the Republicans," earlier today you said. Uh, Senator Savino, well, 
if we wanted that, it would have been a power. This isn't a power play. If we right. had wanted that, we would have joined with the Republicans, right. which you just said here. What about the issue of um, of sour grapes that you somehow got mistreated, and and so you're, and with the exception of you, Senator Carlish, because you just got here. I mean, I think it's a, it's beyond that. You know, the you know the finger pointing, as I said before, is not a legislative uh, strategy, and it doesn't work. Right. Uh, I think it's moving forth with a legislative agenda. Senator Valeski said it best. The only thing I've heard out of a Democratic conference is how we're going to take back the majority. There's a bunch of old guys on the Republican side, and uh, we're going to be back in the majority by 2011. Yep. Let's show the voters that we're going to do property tax relief. We're going to make our government more efficient. We're going to create jobs. You want to know something? That's how we rebrand the Democratic Party, mm -hmm. and we take back the majority in 2012. Okay, and you also said this morning, now, I, I believe just, just yourself, you spoke to Andrew Cuomo, is that yes, correct? Before you made the announcement this morning, the, the announcement came at 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, and he did not encourage you, but he did say that he supported everyone. Um, well, we he, didn't make our, we already made our decision, so we didn't So he didn't out encourage beforehand. you in any way? There was no lobbying no, no, in any way? No. Because there has been some thought that you guys are actually more in line fiscally, at least on, on the conservative me message, with the Republicans, and they're more in line with his conservative message. Already we're seeing statements coming out of the Senate Democrats saying things like, we don't want to balance the budget on the backs of the people who are working people, and the backs of the old, and the backs of the young. I mean, you're talking about people, it looks like they're going to start saying no. Well, to that, um, first of all, I, I think we heard today the Speaker of the Assembly, Sheldon Silver, who is probably far more liberal than I am yep. in many instances be supportive of an agenda that recognizes the government needs to change. I almost fell off my chair when he said he's a part of a property tax. <laughs> well, <laughs> devil's, in the, devil's in the details. <laughs> I'm not so sure. Things he did. But what we heard today from Andrew Cuomo in his state of the state was not the usual rhetoric of a governor in a bad fiscal time. I didn't hear him say he was going to balance the budget on the backs of the poor and the working class. I didn't hear him say that he was going to balance the budget on the backs of children and the elderly. I heard him talk about redesigning government in a way so that we can become more efficient and meet the challenges that we all know we have to, which is very different. You know, I've been in government for 20 years now, you know, starting in an agency, you know, as a young caseworker. And I joke with Senator Klein all the time, when you go to work for government, they give you the employee handbook and it says right there on page one, this is the way it's always been done. Well, the way it's always been done doesn't work. And we need to change the way things are done so we can provide a quality education and health care and transportation and public protection and job creation. That's what I heard today from Andrew Cuomo. And Last word to, to the, you, Senator to this group, To Diane's point, the way things have been done from a legislative definition of two conferences made up of the two major parties, that hasn't been working. And the reason why we're here together, the four of us, is to find a new way to solve the problems of the people of the state. J just in short, though, are you not concerned about some kind of political retaliation, if, if not from a special two years down the road? And if ever the Democrats get back to the majority, they'll say, you know what, guys, we don't want you. I'm concerned about doing the things that the people who sent me here in the first place to, to do. Clean up the culture of Albany, enact the property tax cap. Uh, address the spending issues, create jobs in, in upstate New York where I represent and across the state. If we deliver on the issues that are important to the people that we represent, that will define our success. Listen, we've got to stop worrying about the next election and worry about the next generation. Well, okay, nods all around. We will be talking to everybody again. I want to thank everybody just one last time, Senator Carlucci, Senator Valeski, Senator <laughs> Savino, and Senator <laughs> Klein. I made it. And we will be, one, we will be back one final time after this quick break. Don't go away. Good morning.